is arguably the most important tool for communication ever developed, especially written language. With written language, we become capable of transporting uh, complex ideas, experiences, over vast geographic and dis uh, time distances. This allows people to build upon and further knowledge and uh, experiences that have been gained by the previous generations or people that they've never interacted with. It is a single human invention that has allowed us to tra transform the world in our own image. And people have been using language to communicate political ideas for as long as civilization has existed itself. From the Code of Hammurabi to the Declaration of Independence, we've been writing down our ideas about good governance and spreading them amongst each other, uh, each other to effect change. Over time, for most of human history, the speed of this communication has been restricted by the rate at which a single person can take a message from one point to another. However, over the last few hundred years, we've experienced several major revolutions in communication that has changed the way we talk to one another. The latest of these revolutions is the internet. And it's begun to shape our, uh, the ways that we interact with each other, ourselves, and our society in ways that we have not yet fully come to understand. In response, we can change the ways that we interact with the information that are available on the internet to shape and mold our political discussions in the future. So prior to the internet, we had three major revolutions in the way that we communicate with each other. The first of which was the printing press. This allowed for a one-to-many communication model at the rate of human speed but it also allowed for mass distribution of ideas. And there's no, uh, no disputing whether how this was effective or not. It allowed a political dissidents to distribute 100,000 copies of uh, Thomas Paine's Common Sense in 1776 and incite a revolution. The next advancement in communication technologies is uh, it was communicate, telecommunications through the telegraph and telegram. This allowed people to communicate over long distances, but only one-on-one. -on -one. The advantage of this uh, allowed news stations to put news from all over the world in every newsstand in every major city. Lately, uh, just before the internet, we had the uh, development of tele modern telecommunications. The radio and the TV put broadcasted news uh, information directly to car radios and living room television sets all over our country. The combination of these three different kinds of media have been used by our modern 24-7 news media networks to shape our political discussions in some ways that are subtle and other ways that are really obvious. It's uh, lately, the internet has, like I said before, begun to really shift the way that we connect with them one another. The most important thing to remember about each of these developments is they not only increase how fast our ideas travel, but also how many people these ideas can eventually reach. For the first time, we are all connected on a global scale by a broad, distributed communication network that cannot easily be disabled. Information can travel from pocket to pocket, literally at the speed of light. Distance is no longer a restriction upon our communication. The power of this kind of distributed network becomes evident when we see protests like the Arab Spring and Occupy Wall Street. These protests, uh, the Arab Spring protests in 18 countries toppled four governments, and, in every, uh, and all across the board, social media was a powerful tool in organizing these protests. Despite concentrated effort by authority figures to cut off internet access to the protesters, people still managed to bring a wealth of information out and into the world. People used the, uh, the multimedia platform of the smartphone in ways, in new and exciting ways. So for the first time, we're really reaching out on a worldwide level. From tweets, blogs, uh, internet news, we find our information in new and exciting ways. Nope. There we go. In fact, last year, 34% of people reported getting their news from some kind of online source. This, factor, uh, this trend of connection to the web is even more apparent when we factor in social media. And as you can see, 44% uh, have gotten their news from any web or mobile source. The next, uh, this trend of connection is even more, like I said, even more obvious when we begin to factor in social media. 
from Facebook for our friends to Google for business and LinkedIn for our careers, we've embraced social media into every aspect of our life. It's changing how we interact. We're expected, jobs expect us to be on the call 24 seven. Our friends think it's weird if we don't respond to that Facebook message. You know, we have a 24 hour connection to the world around us. This connection is, again, the next step in this connection are these. Smartphones put all the tools of uh, media con uh, distribution and creation in the hands of normal people. This allowed protesters from the Arab Spring to broadcast images of themselves and their interactions with authority figures around the world without having to use traditional media outlets. For the first time, we're really reaching out to each other for our sources of information instead of a central figure. And this is a really big shift. Another interesting way of using the multimedia platform to affect social change is a project called Video the Vote. Video the Vote started in 2006, and it asked an ordinary citizens to be on hand to, with a, uh, on hand at polling stations with a, with a phone, an internet connection, and some kind of video recording device to record and report any and all uh, odd voting behaviors, voter suppression, you know, um, funny business at the polls. The project dramatically grew over the years, and in 2012, Video the Vote reported 4,419 separate instances of voting issues across seven, uh, seven swing states. We need to take the examples that have been given to us by Video the Vote and the protesters in the Arab Spring and Occupy Wall Street, and begin to use this new tool in our pockets to, uh, to record our interactions with elected officials whenever they interface with the public. We need to hold them accountable for what they say as well as how they vote. And the only way we can do this is if we have a record of what they've said. Now, political actions over the internet have really only become possible over the last five years because of the spread in mo uh, mobile market, um, the mobile market. Because as Clay Shirkley said in his own TED Talk, technology doesn't become politically useful until it's become technologically boring. We can't really begin to organize massive protests or political actions with social media and mobile devices if we don't all have smartphones in our pockets. People are using these smartphones for more and more things as well. People uh, report using, have used access to the, uh, some kind of health information through their smartphone, th uh, one third of people. 56% of people report having access to the internet in some way. And 44% have used their phone to take a video or a picture and share it with their friends. We're reaching out and creating our own content distributing it amongst ourselves, and not using traditional media networks that rely on a, a centralized information net. Because the internet does not revolve around the 24-hour broadcasted opinions of a few people to a captive audience, it changes the way that we discuss things amongst ourselves. And as smartphones continue to become the norm, people will continue to reach for them more and more to check the information that they see. The internet places an absolutely stunning amount of information in the hands of everyday people. We can search anything at any time. We can fact check officials in the moment while they're making claims and combine this with our ability to record them to hold them accountable for those claims. This is especially evident when we start to look at the younger demographics. In the 18 to 24 uh, year old bracket, 44% of people have used their smartphone to check if something they saw on television was true. Instead of referring to traditional media outlets, we are beginning to look to the internet and to each other for our sources of information and our sources for truth. Regarding the internet instead of traditional media as the last bastion for truth in our society. But it's not just the uh, av applicable availability of information that is provided by the internet that really uh, allows us to change the way that we talk to each other. Projects like Video the Vote involve massive participation of people across the nation. Other projects um, 
For example, the Obama administration in 2012 election gave, uh, made a submission to a website called Reddit under the forum AMA, or Ask Me Anything. It was an open interview where anyone in the world could submit a question to the President of the United States, which would then be upvoted or downvoted based on the community, and the, uh, the President would answer any of the questions that were uh, the most upvoted questions. It facilitated a truly nationwide discussion. Because the internet does not rely on a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many communication model, but instead reflects a many-to-many -many communication model, we can all reach out, we can all ask questions, we can all get responses. In the spirit of this connection, the Obama administration pursued a project called the We the People Petitions. They asked ordinary citizens to make submissions, and people could then sign these, uh, sign these petitions. Upon receiving 25,000 signatures, the petitions would receive an official response from the White House. Now, the petitions at first, the citizenry took them fa fairly seriously, submitting major concerns and expecting an, a, a response. However, the White House didn't treat it with the same amount of respect and most of the responses were written by low-level staffers and were just reiterated previously stated Obama administration policies. What we have here is content created by individuals with political meaning, a modern version of the filing for a redress of grievances. We have to address these things, especially when we stand together and make, for the, same, uh, make the same claim as a group. We cannot just ignore the individual content created by people and distributed throughout the internet. Now, as I said, this broad distributed communication network allows for an absolutely unprecedented amount of access to information and content distribution. It allows us as people to make content and distribute it amongst ourselves without having to relate through, uh, relay through a media outlet. This many-to-many -many communication model is difficult to damage or deceive because anyone can fact check anyone at any time. We can all share this information amongst ourselves, and so it's impossible to really hide things. People are using these tools that are available through social media and technology to reach out to each other in new ways by distributing the information available. At a grassroots level, to organize political events. So what we have to do to really use these tools that we've been given to change the world that we live in, and not just what we talk about in politics, but how we talk to each other about it, is we must, we must record elected officials every time we interact with them, town halls, public meetings. They have to know the public officials should expect that any time they interface with the people who elected them, that they will be recorded. We need to use these recordings in conjunction with our unprecedented amount of information that are, is available to us online to hold these officials accountable, not only for their actions in office, but for their, when the, for their actions interacting with us. We have to take the content that we, the people, create and distribute it amongst ourselves to incite action seriously, and we need our governments to also take these things seriously. Because when people don't feel like their, be their concerns are being addressed, then we have real bigger problems. But most importantly, what we need to do is we must continue to use the power of the many-to-many -many communication model that has been provided to us by the internet to continue to reach out to each other and to our society in new and innovative ways so that we can change not only what we talk about, but how we talk about it and shape our political discussions in the future.